What is up guys, Rick is here with a new video and today we are going to use my new copy of Lord of Sparkles Your Own Tomb and you can see it is an S tier copy. Actually got one, quite happy about that. Had to stay up late actually to do the bidding because this copy in the middle of the night, quite horrible. Um, but we got it, it's 57 million attack which is very nice. No destiny transition yet obviously because well don't have the full core. We have uh, the two star core actually. Stats are quite decent. It's not really insane. It's a bit low average, but uh, we got an S tier on attack. 8216 there and we got 89 speed even as S tier, which is pretty nice on an assassin where you're mostly looking to attack first. Um, bonus stats, precision, crit giant, killer hunters focus is pretty decent for our purposes right now, which is doing broken spaces, obviously. We already saw that in, uh, saw that in a thumbnail, I guess. Um, but later on I will reroll that. I want to have twine immunity. Um, I don't really want him to be twined by some TBB. Um, Stat-wise, other than that, skill damage 417%, precision 125 will be decent uh, with MFF. A precision buff block is okay. Uh, crit at 62%. We were at like 97% with crit imprint. I had to swap that for holy damage. Uh, crit damage overcapped, armor break overcapped. Uh, well, we can't really do anything against that. It's an assassin after all. We got two star gear, not three star gear. Oh, skill damage attack, attack stone. Um, didn't want to reroll for skill damage, holy damage. Would have been a bit better. Roll everything all right. Usual BS11 setup that we used. Um, and we'll just take that into Broken Spaces now. So let's hop over there. We'll start Broken Spaces 7. Yeah, I just skipped the ones before that. Um, mainly because, yeah, well, you see one hit and that's it. That's not very entertaining. So let's start with Ada and Aspen. Um, I still think that it's going to be probably murdered by MFF, DGN or SQH. I think this MFF has like 40 million attacks still. So yeah, that's the thing. And this DGN... Oh, <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I mean, he just basic attacked that asp. That was so fast. Okay. I mean, you probably should have skipped that one as well. That's Broken Spaces 8. Like, usually I would switch to Mark Purify here. Let's just not do that this time. Usually I would switch to Mark Purify just because, well... Uh, carry. Oh, that was just a basic attack. Yeah, the DGN is actually quite huge. It's actually quite huge because she is the only real tenant that we have for... Ooh, very nice. The only real tenant that we have for Lord of Sparkles. Um, and therefore she has full soul power as well. He has full soul power as well. So uh, yeah, the, she also has quite some attack. I'm not quite sure exactly how much. Okay, um, Drake... Russell, I, I'm afraid it will look the same, actually. <laughs> I mean, we don't even have divine power on this guy. And he's doing mean things to them. On turn one and two. This guy's dead turn two. Like, like that's basically guaranteed. Yep, and he's gone. <laughs> we didn't even get to see the dodge ability. That's such a ni nice dodge ability. He's doing good damage. He's actually doing good damage. Okay, uh, stage 10? Um, I mean, like, our positioning shouldn't matter anymore, considering we have a hero that is targeting by himself anyway, so let's let's just see what happens, I guess. Uh, he should attack lowest life as an assassin, so should probably work. I'm not quite sure if we can one-shot it. Uh, I mean, we struggled a little bit when we had uh, divine power on our LFA still, and uh, this guy has none of that. So, I mean, there's still a huge damage potential left there obviously for us to grasp and uh, and use in the future. Uh, in the future meaning hopefully next week. Next week is uh, New Year, so that's also kind of a big event and we need like two more core boxes. If that is possible, that would be very nice. Uh, don't see the bar there moving yet and we'll probably see a long-term test of, or a long round test of DGN and our boy LOS. So, I think DJN might just win it. LOS, really, in my opinion, I got to test him a bit more, also in PvP. 
he is like the hero you want to use to punch through high defenses. He has a lot of passive damage even with his following up attacks every time a hero attacks. You can see it right there. He attacks, heals himself because we now actually have full sublimations on this guy. Um, and that really helps. And the other really strong ability that I also kind of underestimated, uh, his basic attack. His basic attack with his sublimation has a 90% chance to inflict Seal of Light. And I was using him... Um, with an A and B in, for some time in PvP teams. And the interesting thing he did, oh, there we go, oh, that was decent. And the interesting thing he did was he um, he did this basic attack, and oftentimes he would hit the lowest life, which sometimes, or in a lot of teams actually, in more teams than you would expect, is TBB, because TBB has horrible tenants. So people just tend to use her CC support, make her a bit fast. And then she ends up not having as much HP as, for example, the warriors on the same team. And uh, she would get hit by the basic skill of uh, LOS, and he would just inflict Seal of Light on her, which means she can't use her passive skill. So no longer um, will she do an active skill that is triggered by her passive 2 whenever she has full, um, full energy. That doesn't work anymore if, if Seal of Light is on her. Would have thought that this would do more damage. Actually, this last actor skill there. Um, I mean, we are still on the way to actually clear that with a more defensive team than we usually would have used. I mean, against this one, uh, we would have been fine using Hardwatcher and uh, maybe even like Olivia. We are not using that. We are using the team we would usually use against uh, BS12. 11? 11. Not, uh, yeah, 11. Not 12. <laughs> BS12 doesn't exist. <laughs> would have been fun, though. I'm, I'm all up for another SL at uh, Broken Spaces. My god! Um, so it looks like we will beat that, but looking at the damage numbers here and this hitting turn 13, I am pretty sure we are not going to beat um, Broken Spaces 11 then. It, is, it did some pretty good damage. He honest, I'm surprised he um, out-damaged our DGN, because it's DGN, she is really quite strong. She has a great role, Giant Killer, Defier, Crit, Fear Immunity is her role. Um, we have 9 Divine Power here on her, 0 Divine Power on our uh, LOS, and he still did a ton of damage. Obviously, Endless Cane is on him, but, but still, that's quite insane. Maybe we can check that out for a second. Um, there is actually the DGN, and she has 52 million. She's not a homeowner, 52 million attack, which is uh, a bit insane, obviously, in this case with Flag. Uh, speed attack even and yeah it's just pretty nice so i'm 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 surprised he can do better than her because she definitely has the advantage in terms of stats um do we have to change anything i don't think so i think we can just go into broken spaces 11 give it our best shot and just try um to beat it as swiftly as possible now obviously uh, lowest life will be attacked again is that even correct, or did we change that? I think we always attack the lowest life, yeah, which is the forces, so that's good. Um, let's hope our energy drain works correctly. Um, so far, so good. We, have, we are going to take a hit from that Vulcan, though. It's going to hurt. But I think we can take it. Hopefully we can. Ah, uh, sometimes the damage is a bit delayed. Oh no, that, that looks alright. That looks alright. I'm expecting to not clear this forces within the 15 rounds, to be honest. Um, and we may even die a bit early on. The, the good thing now is, um, and that is some, an advantage that we usually didn't have with LFA, uh, LOS has dodge, so he can actually dodge the uh, basic attack from the forces. Maybe we should have put him in slot 1 giving him more ample opportunities to dodge, because the Vulcan obviously hits slot 1. Um, but dodging the basic skill... Now I thought, okay, the... the, the oh! The uh, forces just decided to hit DGN instead. But he did hit the LOS before. No, now it's DGN. <laughs> now he hits DGN. Okay, interesting. Apparently our highest attack hero has just swapped over to DGN, which is alright. I mean, saves our LOS from getting hit with the uh, all damage um, dealt reduction that um, the forces usually inflicts. Uh, 
which I wanted to say he could maybe even dodge. And now he gets hit again. <laughs> it swapped again. That's quite interesting. But okay. Um, we are doing a decent amount of damage now. At least we are doing visible damage. I mean, I mean that's a start. Um, and not getting... Ooh. Okay, that was bad. There we had another actor skill. I was hoping they changed the uh, Elena skill by now, but apparently normal Elena still tends to lose one or two rounds in a fight where you still get hit by an actor skill. Can we beat this guy? If we can beat this guy, this is actually huge. I, I, I still don't think he will be the best PvE damage dealer. I still don't think so. I think he will have a spot in PvP where he will beat heroes with crown and heroes with high defenses and will punch through all of that, get a few nasty kills, will do some great stuff. I think I think he will still have to stand back behind LFA and other more capable damage dealers um, in PvE, especially in those boss fight situations. Um, but then again, I'm open to surprises. If we are going to see like, for example, a, a very high destiny um, LOS, and he does very well. Well, who am I to judge? I have an S tier now, so that would be pretty great. The last three rounds, really not that exciting. Um, not even close to beating this guy, honestly. And that is less damage than I expected. It is pretty much exactly the same damage, though, that we did on the last stage. Just in that, in this case, the LOS well, still did more than our DGN, but uh, not too much more, actually. So not very exciting here in terms of damage. This is a bit like his cap, I think. Mm. Let's smash one attack. Let's see how that changed. It's 68, so that wasn't even a whole lot. Let's do another one. 68, 2. What do we have now? 58. So that was even less damage. We had some even worse attacks now mm, but we should now be at least close to killing this forces i don't know seems to be not that super consistent at least this force is still alive i mean with some bad energy uh drains by the uh, by the elena I, I can definitely see that work out to our disadvantage here so i don't think they will be able to oh they can kill the oh actually killed the Elena. Bloody hell. Okay, that's horrible. Didn't think that he would still be able to kill that Elena. She has a lot of HP. And now, of course, well, and now, of course, it's bound to be a horrible attack. Um, and wasn't... How did that work? Like, now the Drake died, now the Elena died, and uh, our DGN basically did no damage, but our... Okay, that makes no sense. Bloody hell. That's alright. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't complain about it. Uh, let's watch one more fight against the Vulcan, let's see what happens there. I mean, do we need all of those heroes? Can we go for some high damage, maybe with a Flame Shine setup? Let's do some high damage with a flame shrine setup. Okay, usually this team can't really survive against uh, Forces and Vulcan, but I figure if it's just Vulcan, maybe we can. With the attack reduction and everything, there is at least a small chance. So let's try that. Also, we uh, won't have this big DGN uh, in the team, which means it's probably a bit easier for LOS to shine. Which is also quite good. Okay, now we'll have to see uh, what he does with his active skills. I mean, that still looks kind of alright. He's also shrunk, so in that sense, that will also help against this single target. Um, it's about what we expect, really. I mean, considering we'll still beat that in like five or six attacks, um, that is still pretty decent. With a damage dealer with no divine power, I think we would have struggled in, in, during the first time we faced this stage. I think that would really have been the case. So I'm, I'm pretty positive about him doing decently well. Um, it's also what I saw in PvP, already getting some kills there, struggling a bit against divine power though. Struggling a bit against divine power, that 
Um, didn't work out quite too well if the enemy had like 10 divine power or something. If he hit that, that was just like a brick wall. Um, but that's hopefully going to change next week. I'm trying to get two cores and then maybe maybe we will find the soul symbols to put some destiny transition on him. I sure hope so. So, okay. Round 8, that could be a very mean actor skill. Um, wasn't quite that mean. Let's see if we can do some big damage here. Big damage turn next turn. Ah, uh, probably after this active skill. Probably after the active skill, we could have a good chance to do that again. I mean, if we dodge that, got this, um, got these stacks. Okay, now we have the stacks. That's good. Expected it a bit earlier, to be honest. Let's see how much damage we do. Turn twelve. Not very, very exciting. Not very exciting. I would have expected way more damage, to be honest. Um. I don't know, on the later rounds where LFA really puts out 80% on, of his damage in the last 2-3 rounds, he's just not doing that. He's just there, okay, doing some damage. We have some scaling from the Endless Cane, but really not much more in that regard. And that is something that I I don't like, really. Okay, we have a, last, we have a turn 15 round with Monster and debuff and everything. And it's, it's, it's okay, but it's like... It's not what you would expect. It's like the, the best circumstances that he could have had to deal damage there. And he has, he has Heartwatcher, he has Olivia now on the team, he has all the buffs that he can get. It's still not very exciting. So, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it, I'm not very overwhelmed by this. I have to say, it's, it's not really the, the best. Um, it's decent, but not really too much. Okay, that is not what the other team obviously will need a few more attempts. Okay, now we cleared. Yeah, good. Um, is he the most or the best boss damage dealer? No, he is pretty much what I expected. He is not an S tier bo um, boss damage dealer in that sense. If you talk about like rankings, I would, I would, for example, place uh, LFA as an S tier damage dealer for bosses, which is probably like the only one at that tier. And then below that, we can talk about Farrakh and Vesa um, as a boss damage dealer, MFG. And below that is probably uh, him, SSM, DTV, which are all fine, which are all decent, which are all doing good damage. It's not like Azrael level, I hit the boss and kill myself. Um, no, it's, it's decent boss damage. It's not bad, but there are just levels above that. And um, if you saw my last um, video on Broken Spaces, you saw that too. Um, in PvP, from what I've seen, and there will be another video on that, he did way better. He did way better, and for that I like him, and we'll see, I think, a team with him in the very near future, because I can set him up a bit earlier than I can set up SSM. Later on, we'll see if we can put both SSM and him in a team. For now, thank you guys for watching. I wish you a great day. See us in the next one.